focus. Focus. Hold on, guys. Focus. Ah. Good morning, buddy. My camera is being a jerk. Hold on, let me try something really quickly. Play booth. Cam. Cam. Hmm. Why is it being... Oh, there it is. Okay. It took a second. Uh, I just realized I forgot my sign. <laughs> hey. Kevin McKinney, good morning. Um, Daniel, thank you. Hold on. I'm going to be right there. Let me get my sign. Set up. Oh, sorry. Move it down a little bit. You know, yeah, I noticed that too, that my sound is low. And what happened was my OBS got uh, rebooted. So I, let me go, hold on, guys. Let me see if I can go into settings really quickly and increase the, um, hold on. Let me get in here real quick. Yeah, it says it's maxed out, but that's baloney. Hold on. Let's go to uh, advanced properties, audio. YouTube, or both. Face. Um, right and left. Make the volume activated. Blue face. That's just the switches. Hold on. That's not it. Let's go to. Uh, Properties, microphone, getting microphone, it's there, hold on, okay, there's got to be, um, hold on guys, let me go into uh, settings, audio. Yeah, there's, um, it's ridiculous because normally, um, I noticed that too when I was taking the footage uh, I shot already, I was going to bring in uh, some stuff and I was like, hey, the audio is really low on that and there's a way to turn it up. I just don't know how. Um. <laughs> that's Kevin, that's your fault. You did that. I blame you. Uh, I just want to try to see if I can... Um, If I can, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go. Let's go to general real quick here. General update output projection system preview audio. Yeah, I need somebody who knows a little bit more about. Yeah, it is too low though. Sorry, but I will. I will get closer when we start talking. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, yes, um, today, um, as you guys can see right here, <clears throat> our gauntlet has been painted. I used um, a Platifex Gold as coin, and then there's the one called uh, two different colors. Um, I got the red for the arm part here. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to age it with oil paints. That's what we're going to do right now. Um, put the eyeballs in there right now, and it's just in there temporarily. Um, I'm going to definitely uh, take this out, but let's do that in the video. Let's get back to it. Let's do that. Let's go overhead real quick. Turn the monitor so I can see it. <coughs> oh! Wow. 
Wow, everybody, that's my dear friend, uh, Tyrannus, up all the way there from down under, Australia. Um, today, um, Tyrannus, how you doing? Uh, guys, if you don't realize, I, I'm, this is from that, he's from my Twitch stream. He resubbed. Again, thank you so much for your continued support. Um, yes, if you guys are watching this on uh, Twitch, it's a simulcast. I'm also doing this on YouTube at the same time. Uh, I have my chat open on uh, YouTube. So if you guys have things you want to chat or talk, please come over to YouTube because I don't have it set up for doing it on Twitch. So thank you so much, Trinus. Thank you. <laughs> Who's ready? Because I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Um, let me get some foil. All right, guys. And I'll show you what we're doing here. Clear frame, get all stuff out of the way. All right, just take this lens out. Um, we're going to age it using some oil paint. Uh, I like taking some cardboard and covering foil over it. There you go. And I do this because. When applying oil, I used to just do it strict on directly um, on the cardboard, but the oil would just kind of soak into the cardboard. So I would like to do stretch the lifespan of it a little bit. Let's get some black. There you go. Let me get me some brown here. I got my little spatula here. I'm going to mix these guys together. All right. And I take a stiff bristle brush like this guy. And we're gonna load it up on the tip here. I'm gonna go on my edges like this and apply it in the nooks and crannies. As you can see, I'm just focusing on the, just on the inside. The, just a little careful, Ted. We don't need a lot. L less is more with the oil. It's going to definitely spread a little bit. I might, let me get some, you might want to get some oils. Let me get some olive oil to thin this down a little bit. It'll probably go a lot faster. Um, and then I'll take a big soft brush like this guy. See? And just blot it. See? Kind of fade it out a little bit. You can see I got way too much oil paint in there. Here, hold on. But no worries because you can do this, right? And then you take a paper towel and you wipe off the excess like that. See? Yeah, see? There you go. That looks cool. Yeah, tell you what. Let me get um, this. I like the oil to be a little thinner so it spreads evenly. So let me get... Do I have some oil here? Hi, guys. Real quickly, let me catch up with chat real fast. Man, it's so hot in the video. Um, 
Before EVA Cosplay, did you work on films using other materials? Yeah, John, uh, I did. I did. Um, I didn't work when I first started. Everything was uh, as a model maker. Everything was casting resins, like fiberglass and casting resin. That's all we did. Or acrylic, um, like spaceships. You know, you did acrylic and stuff. But mostly it was like uh, casting resin, vacuum forming. Almost everything we did was vacuum forming, casting resins, and ca and uh, fiberglass. And then. Um, and of course the makeup was you know rubber latex and stone and urethane with props and stuff but uh, uh, but anyway let me get um not get distracted here let's go get some oil so I can uh, add that to the paint to thin this down a little bit I thought I had some up here do I have some up there maybe I thought I did probably not alright hold on guys I'll be right back please Stand by. Okay, I'm back. Um, uh, mm, uh, I've seen small vacuum form builds. heavy on the oils there. Let me get a paper towel. Get a couple paper towels here. One more bite. Um, I've seen small vacuum form builds. How would you go about building a layer style if possible? Oh, you just do multiples. Um, what usually people do is you have a helmet or something or a shape, you vacuum form it like a couple, you make three or four of them of vacuum form pieces, and then use one as the base. And then the secondary, you, you draw like a design or a piece on it, and you cut it, cut out your design, and you stack it. So then, therefore, you know it's going to fit exactly on top of it because it's, it's pulled from the same buck. So you just keep adding pieces. So you back from one and then add pieces to the top of it. I do that a lot on my cyberpunk stuff. I made a mask one time and did the same thing. Mm, all right.
Nice, good cut. Overhead. Mm. Hey Daniel, yeah, because um, vacuum farm, you need a machine. And the vacuum farm machines are not, they're not cheap, they're expensive. I think some of them are overpriced. Um, but it, yeah, it's it takes a lot of power. You need it's like now you, you're using heating elements. You got to heat up the plastic, and then you have a vacuum tank that sucks the air. So it's all the stuff that just draws a lot of power. So if you're you if you use one at the house, you got to use it kind of freak like randomly because the power it draws is a lot. So your electric bill will go up because it's like using an oven all the time. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's it's. It's great for mass production stuff when you're ma making a bunch of, you have to make a whole bunch of the same thing. That's what vacuum forming is really good for. Thus why they made the stormtroopers and, and you know, 1970, you know, when 77 when Star Wars came, that's all the stormtroopers were just vacuum form plastic. We keep them on the, on the price, keep them on the down low. Okay. Let's get to it. All right, I got some, a uh, little bit of olive oil. I just added to the oil to make it a little bit softer. And it allows it to, um, you guys use like mineral spirits, which I do not have. So that's why I'm using olive oil. Um, it allows it to uh, thin it down a little bit so I can brush it in. In the cracks and crevices like this. Get you guys a little closer to this. Yeah. In the nooks like that. Right, like that. As you can see, I'm just doing a little section at a time. So I can keep track of where I'm going with this stuff. And we'll do some here, one here. that Put this in the paper towel See, it just takes the newness out of the paint job. I love it because you want this. We want this to look like it's metal and it's been worn and used. And it does. Yeah, this looks oh nice. See, kind of breaking up a little bit. All right, and then do the same thing here in this crevice here. This guy.
right, now for the dry brush. That like that. Now, some of the oil residue might stick on this a little bit too much to your liking. You can always go back and paint it. That's the thing about cool about the uh, the acrylic paints. And if there's some spots that are hard to get, I got a Q-tip right here. Come in here and get that. Wipe off the stuff on the inside. up a paper towel yeah look at that all right uh, let me change that again um, I've got enough footage of me doing that so why we just catch up with chat while I do it um, <clears throat> Ooh, the microphone so you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get this microphone volume thing set up. Mm. Mm. Hey, Hellfire Zombie, what's up? How you doing, man? Um, hold on, guys. I'm going to chew. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, have you ever gotten a local makerspace to check to see if they have one in Milwaukee makerspace that has a few of the small and one huge one worth money, worth the money to join? Yes, there's a vac. If you have access to a vacuum machine, that's definitely worth the money to join. Yes, I agree with you, Hellfire Zombie. Hey, Johnny, is uh, curious when wet, f wet forming leather into a shape and strapping foam to shape. Can you heat EVA foam to the shape? Oh, try it. Uh, yeah, no, you can You can heat EVA foam a lot. It does. But uh, Becky's right, though. It cools really quickly. You have to work fast. You can heat stuff up, but it cools quickly. You can, you can do it to degree. Uh, you can't do it like plastic, but it definitely does form quite a bit. Mm. Um. How can someone build something? No. Oh. How can someone build something from being inspired but without copying or getting sued? Is there rights and images? Dude, there's like, listen to me. If you're not if you're not because even us making something is not a direct copy because you can't unless you're three D printing something, it's really hard to get something exact. And for right now, like it's a perfect example. Um, I'm, I love aliens, and I made the pulse rifle and a flamethrower. Um, and it's 20th Century Fox, but the movie's like decades old. It was made in 1984. Nobody cares. They don't care. It's all property. Granted, if I was to set, if I was to make castings and sell them, I might be something else. But since I'm making a pattern and selling a pattern, and you have to make it, did it leave me alone? It's like. It's not that big of a deal. It's weird. It all depends, various. But when you're doing big budget properties like Disney and Star Wars, then they might. But when you're making something that's inspired you, and if it's a little bit different, they're not going to come after you.
Not, yeah, like Batman, the Red Hood. There's so many different variations of that character. You can embellish on that, yeah. Mm. Mm, all right. Let me get back to brushing this. Get some oils in here. Yeah, the oil thing is, uh, it's been a great trick. I learned that from my buddy Bill Duran. Um, I used to do it with acrylic paints, and acrylic sometimes sticks more than you want it to. And it's hard to get the acrylic paint to fade the way you like it without airbrushing it. So then once you started using the oil, I'm like, oh yeah, you have a little bit more control, you know. I don't know, you know, spreading out, making it fade. I'm sorry, let me get back. Sorry, overhead guys. These people are, um... Matter of fact, guys, I think, mean, yeah, Becky's the proper person for that question. <laughs> So you can don't get too much that that's all right, I get that majority of it covered. Let's take our brush. Let's 
that. All right, now. Now, the reason I add the oil, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, olive oil to the oil paint, it does make it a little bit thinner and a lot easier to remove. Sometimes if the oil paint's too thick, it'll really stick. More than you probably would like it to, so. Great. <laughs> Hold on, let me clear this frame a little bit. Oh, well, guys, really quickly, get some stuff adjusted here. Because for all you people out there watching, uh, I'm going to take this video and, of course, cut it all down and make it a little more palatable. Um, and you guys will be able to. <laughs> Dante's Plague. How you doing, my friend? I read it really quickly. It's Dante's Plague. That alert is from a subscription from my Twitch channel. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is being simulcast same time on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Uh, for all you people who are on Twitch and want to chat, definitely hop over to YouTube on the Evil Ted channel on YouTube Live because that is where I'm at today. So if you guys want to chat or ask questions, that is where you can reach me. I have my Twitch family too, so I'm glad they're able, are able to watch me over there as well. Um, this is, yeah, this is looking great. Um, see, look at that. It really, it gives it that depth that it needed, right? <laughs> um, we've got the gall underneath, which I'm looking at it. And it looks all right. I mean... Let's put a little bit. Yeah, let's do a little bit of oil on that too. Yeah, let's do that. Pull the head. <clears throat> all right, this is looking good. It's coming together. Got all the spots now. Um, underneath here, I like this. This looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do a little bit of um. Make these guys pop a little more. I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do a little bit more black. The brown's good for the gold, but let's go a little heavy on the tendrils below. And let's just do some black. Yeah, that is down quite a bit. We're just going to put some black in the cracks here. Mm. Uh, just a little bit down through here. the big brush spread it out 
that. More paper towel. Yeah, see, that looks great. I gotta get this all cleared out a little bit. <clears throat> all right, this has all been properly aged. Got the inside wrist straps done. Got the outside gauntlet looking good. Properly patinaed. Um, hold on, let me just real quickly to see some. Uh, Let's do a little wipe in here. We all, yeah, see, this way. If I can't get in there, I need to do a little Q-tip. All right, there you go, better. <clears throat> so we're gonna let this oil dry, so let's set this aside. Let's get back to our eyeball. Let me get the things I need for the eyeball really quick here. I need this, I need that. Um, I got my 9 volt battery. And some wires. Let's. Somebody asked me, he goes, would WD-40 eat through the foam? WD-40? I don't think so. But I, I don't use WD-40 uh, for my paints. I use olive oil. WD-40 is more of a lubricant. It's not, it's not uh, a solvent. So if you use WD-40 on something, it'll just probably... You know what I do? If I put WD-40 on that, it would, take the, it would take the paint off. Not the paint, but take the oil paint. It would take the oil paint off. Because WD-40 is more of a lubricant. And... Uh, yeah, so that's mostly what WD-40. You could also use it as a cleaner, too. It works really well as a cleanser on, on stovetops. Like with hot cooking ranges and stuff, you, things get baked on. You get a sponge, some WD-40, spray on it, let it soak a little bit, and you can wipe it out. Um, but let me get uh, the lights for the eyes. There's some hot glue too. Let me put the hot glue down while we're at it. Get some uh, fiber fill, right? Hold on, guys. Um, I'll be right back. Let me grab some stuff. stuff I need. Hold on for a second. We've got my soldering gun. Oh, okay, the wire. 
power this rate. Black and red, there we go. And new volt battery. some uh, foam in there, right? Okay. All right, guys. Sorry, it took a while getting everything set up. Um, overhead here. Let's bring the camera down a little bit closer for you guys here. All right. Like that. So now we have this the visor um, and I need some fiber fill for the for the uh, diffusion um, I'm take me a couple seconds I'll be right back please stand by
Okay, I'm back. Let's get down to business. All right, before we do this, you can see on the eyeball, there's a little bit of a Sharpie line, which I had when I was painting it, so we really don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and take that off. Let's try again just one sec. All right, before we put these pieces together on the eyeball, there was a Sharpie line we put on here so we knew where to paint. But we don't need that anymore, so let's go ahead and take off a little alcohol. Take that Sharpie off. All right, perfect, got it. Now we're going to uh, install our light here, but I have my my fiber fill. I'm going to make sure I have it kind of thinned out even. And stuff it in like this to help diffuse the light. And then we'll take this guy. And let's see how much we can get this to fit in here. Yeah, I'm going to cram it in here. There we go. Just that's what I want. Stick it right get in there pretty deep. All right. Now before I glue things in place, I have my battery here. So let's light it up. Make sure it looks good. Yep, see, that's it. That's the glowing eye. It's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Now let's push. So we need a hot glue gun. I want to glue this lens in. <clears throat> Make sure the glue's hot. Let's see if it's hot enough. Oh, that's good. All right, good. All right, we'll square a little behind here. Switch it around, keeping pressure on it. All right. And of course, you want to hold this and let it cool. <clears throat> I'm going to blow on it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going to let the. Uh, this is going to pretty much, unfortunately, guys, wrap up our stream here shortly because once um, this eyeball cools, I can't really glue it in yet because what I want to do is let this um, gauntlet I did earlier with the oil paint and stuff. It's uh, I like the oil paint to sit a little bit longer so it dries. Um, and I was, I, there's, there's some rough spots. I'm going to kind of go through with a fine, go back in with a Q-tip and do some touch-up with it, do a little bit of fine cleaning on it. But it looks I'm very happy with it, so... But I'd like to give this uh, oil a day to dry. And once it's dry, I want to hit it with a, a clear coat. Uh, and once the clear coat's, and then once, because I want to put the clear coat with the eyeball in, I want to do the clear coat with all the foam pieces first. Then this dries, and I'll stick the eyeball in and wire up the uh, battery. Which unfortunately, the bulbs I use uh, for 
the small lithium batteries are not strong enough to light these guys up. So I have to rig up a little 9 volt, which is not bad. I mean, the 9 volt battery, it's going to, um, there's room for it in here. I, 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 I kind of put it in there and thought, put my, and I still, I was still able to put my arm in there. So I'm like, yeah, it, it'll be fine. There's, there's enough, there's enough slack in the gauntlet for a 9 volt battery. <laughs> but be smarter than me and do your research and get some LEDs that work on a small, um, those small lithium batteries, you can hide the battery a lot easier. But I definitely wanted that glowing eye effect, and, it, and that light I have was the best way to do it. So, so now I'm after I have to save everything uh, in the video. I can just do well, do it really quickly. All right, it's all dry, fantastic. Do another, just do one more lighting test. Get that. And that. Oop, there it is. Is there, oh, is there still Sharpie on here? There is. What is that? That's not on the inside, is it? That would suck. Hold on. Okay, good. It's not. All right. <laughs> um, sorry, the little bump the wires above me. But there it is. Let's get kill this light for a second. There you go. So you can see it better. That looks great. Okay, now that we have this done, let's set this aside. <clears throat> let's see what it looks like inside the uh, our gauntlet. <laughs> Sorry, because the wires keep moving. They keep cutting out. So. Wrong side. And there it is. That looks fantastic. Um, we're not going to glue this in yet. Um, we're going to go ahead and unplug these guys for now. Um, <clears throat> we're going to let this go ahead and dry first because the oil paint takes a little bit of drying. So I'm going to let this go ahead and dry, gives about a day to dry, and then we're going to go ahead and put a clear coat on it first, and then we will install the eyeball and battery. That'll be the next step. Oh, thank you. Hey, Tyrannus. <laughs> uh, how would you do the matte finish with a clear coat? Um, how would you? Oh, well, the thing is, I don't want to do a matte finish on it. Um, but how I would do it normally, I use Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. Rust-Oleum is, uh, they make a great uh, 2X for plastics paints. And so I use almost, almost all my paint. All my foam costumes, all the base colors are all done with 2X. They're really durable paint. I love it. And it's flexible, so it doesn't peel off like enamel paint does. Uh, they have two great clears. They have a matte finish and gloss. So if I wanted to make this matte, I would um, hit a matte finish. But I really like all this detail and and the shine of the metal and stuff like So if I put anything on this, I'm going to put a clear and I put a gloss clear. I wouldn't go heavy with the gloss. I would dust it. Most most of my uh, clear coats, if I'm just sealing things, I dust it really heavily. I mean, I dust it, I'm sorry. I dust it very lightly 
to go too if you go too heavy it gets really kind of too glossy sweet 2x yeah man 2x paint is the bomb Merceline's 2x i've been trying to reach out to him i like a like to get a sponsorship from him but they're just like don't call us we'll call you <laughs> and also i need to um get back to doing my videos on a regular basis i'm doing my live stream guys here on youtube because i love youtube but I'm going to get back to doing more videos. I have a video I'm working on right now. Oh, a quick announcement, which you guys will be finding out. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Uh, how many people are in Chicago for E2C2? Which is like in a month. E2C2 is coming up. Any of you guys going E2C2? E2C2. It's in Chicago. Anybody? <laughs> oh, Becky, yeah. Well, um, oh my God, it's a nightmare, but I'm going. Um, I'm going, uh, I'm trying to get. Uh, to do some workshops which I normally don't do it's something that Pete wanted me to do and so we set this thing up it's gonna be a little bit of a chaotic event but all right so where is that I too I like too Matt but the commute is a killer oh yeah right dude yeah it's too far <laughs> But yeah, I'll be E2C2. I'll be doing a, some workshops, and that's the, pretty much the only thing I'm doing. I'm, I'm just going to be at my booth. I'm doing three workshops a day. It's insane. Um, we get there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Oh, right. Yeah, Becky, I... The thing is, I they reached out to us, and Pete and I looked at the dates and thought, there's no way they're going to try to get us there in this span of time. And they are. They're going to do it. I thought they were going to blow it off, but they're bringing me out to do some workshops. Um, look quickly, everybody. If you guys are watching my live stream, thank you so much. Please, if you guys like, leave thumbs up, comments below. Also, go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have patterns. If you guys are new to cosplay, I have really um, – sorry – no hair in my mouth. Um, I have numerous patterns. Also, I have free patterns just to get you guys started. Um, I do have merch. If you guys look in the below on the YouTube channel, I have merchandise. I have um, T-shirts. I have a Foam Fanatic. I have Evil Ted Channel shirts. Um, and if you guys have been inspired by watching my videos and you built your own costumes, I also have Evil Ted's Fan Photo Friday. So if you have a costume you built, if you have a nice photograph of a full body shot of your costume, submit it to Fan Photo Friday. I go through them and I pick uh, a winner. And the winner gets, uh, I send you a postcard and a sticker and an autograph saying thank you so much for submitting. And you get featured in my Fan Photo Friday album I put up on my uh, Evil Ted page. So you'll be in the photo album. It's a great thing to do. So you guys, please, it'd be awesome. Uh, I haven't promoted that in a while, so a lot of them dropped off because I haven't been promoting it. Um, also, but I'll be uh, getting ready for E2C2. And for all you local people in California, don't forget, April 16th is coming up. I'm going to be doing um, the Scum and Villainy workshop. Uh, I'll be doing, that one, uh, doing it every month from now on. I love it. It's a great community, great bar. It's a great communal hangout for people who love sci-fi. This guy, JC, built this Star wars theme bar. It's the cantina from Star Wars, and I absolutely love it. So, please, if you guys can't make it there, we'll be streaming it live here, right here, live, on April 16th, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So put that in your calendars, guys, because I'm going to be setting it up so you guys can please join me. <laughs> Girl, I know. I got a lot packed on this. I got, um, got that I'm doing now, and then I'm getting ready to pack up and go to E2C2. So I got a lot of stuff on my plate. And apparently I'm trying to get ready for Alien Day. I have a thing I want to do for Alien Day. And I, I've been working on the patterns. Doing a Colonial Marine helmet from Aliens. And I, I noticed that my friend Steven is doing a, um, the armor. And I'm like, oh crap, he's doing the armor. It's great. 
because I don't want to do the armor, but he's doing that. But I'm going to do the helmet. He might do the helmet anyway, but I'm still going to do mine because I want to do it. <laughs> and I don't want to wait for him to get his video up first because I, I don't, I just want to do it now and get it done with. So we'll see. But um, everybody, thank you so much this morning for hanging out. I know it's kind of a short stream today, but um, I got my mission accomplished. I want to get this guy aged, which look at that. Ta-da! Got a little patina to it, a little bit there. Nice. Um, and then we're going to put the glowing orb in next. So I'll leave that for you guys. <laughs> Whew. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel live. Um, Trunks Cosplay. It was good to catch up with you again, my friend, even if you don't see you live. I watch the videos later. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice, Trance. Thank you. Um, and I'll, and every, again, everybody, thank you so much for people watching this on uh, Twitch as well, too. I appreciate it. Got to keep, keep it out there. See you guys next week, next Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.